Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel. Today, we'll be working on a suburban furnace. It is an SF30F and it has a bad fan motor. Let me get this out of the case and uh, be right back. All right, so got it out of the case. Uh, this is that one I mentioned in the last video that uh, me and Cameron went and diagnosed uh, the other day. The customer's complaint was the fan wasn't running. And I think I mentioned in that video, just because the ambient noise of a highway too close, we couldn't tell if the fan was running or not. So we went in, pulled the furnace out, and uh, got it on the back of the truck. And let me show you what we found. Now this furnace is old enough to have a time delay relay. So what we done was pulled the motor wire right off the time delay relay, hooked the power to it, and let me show you what happens. That fan is just barely turning. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Yeah, that fan is just barely turning. I could probably stop it with my finger. Yep. Yep. She's, she cooked. <laughs> yeah, she's totally cooked. Yep. Anywho, so I'm gonna get started changing this fan motor and I'm gonna take y'all along. Oh, yeah. I, whenever I'm working on a furnace, I need a fan motor. I like to do the original equipment motors uh, because they make a universal motor. I never had good luck with the universal motors, but we could not get one. We could not get a suburban motor for this. So I had to get a universal. So not real excited about that, but you know, now all days with the COVID nonsense, you do what you gotta do, right? So we're gonna get this, uh, board bracket get it out of the way so we can get in here to the squirrel cage fan this is one in furnace where it actually takes quite a bit of effort to uh to change a fan motor some of them are pretty easy some of them are not so easy so this is a this is a not so easy okay so now we're gonna take, this is the combustion fan side over here. So we gotta take it apart too and try our best to save the gasket. I'm gonna set this up on the side. Makes it harder. Makes it harder for y'all to see, but it makes it easier for me to see. So we just gotta get all these screws out. Of this cover on this combustion fan. I believe that's all the screws. That's most of them anyway. Oh, look at there. Came right off. Gasket ain't hurt one bit. So next, we gotta get both fans off the, off the motor because uh, these actually have a fan on both sides. Let me show you the motor real quick. So the long side is the squirrel cage fan. That's the one that moves the air into the living area. And the short side is your combustion fan. That's what circulates the air through the combustion chamber. Hence the name combustion fan. We go get some Allen wrenches and we'll get them fans off. Hopefully they come off good. Zoom y'all in a little bit there where maybe you can see what's uh, going down here. Let's choose the appropriate size. Allen wrench can be a pretty small. One. Not that one. How about this one? Oh, look at there. First try, sort of. Well, it was almost first try. So this plastic fan over here, you really hope, you really hope it comes off pretty well. Because that old plastic is fragile. You know, after so many years. So let's see how it's gonna come off. Don't ever try this at home, kids. Well, there's slots in that fan. I'm just gonna go in there with this 
flat screwdriver and spread that out a little bit. And I know it seems counterintuitive. Sometimes if you put it on a little bit, then it will come off a little, you know, easier. Well, it, it come part of the way. Just know what good way to get a hold of these things is one of the problems. It's sliding, so that's always a good sign. Something else that you never want to do at home either is pry on this, pry on this fan. So don't ever try this at home, folks. It's only for, for trained professionals or dummies. You can figure out which one I am. I expect some of you may have already formed an opinion on that. That's actually working better than I thought it would. <laughs> It's actually bring it off. I figured it would just squeeze that fan on that shaft and I'd never be able to move it like that. But that's actually per working pretty well. Or it was anyway. Aha! Ta-da! Little plastic. Little plastic combustion fan. Got her off without breaking it. It's always good. All right, now I'm gonna flip it over and get the squirrel cage fan loose. And you probably will not be able to see that at all. So it's pretty deep, it's pretty deep down in that uh, squirrel cage fan. Then we'll flip it over and get our two nuts off of our motor. Ah, you know what? Actually, if I get the uh, the nuts off the motor, uh, I think we'll be able to slip the whole motor and squirrel cage and all right out the other side. So, let's see if I can get you a view of this at all. No, not really, but trust me. Here's the new motor. There's those two studs and uh, it goes through the case and it's got two nuts on it, so I gotta get those, gotta get those nuts off. Then we can slip that motor right through there, I do believe. I better get the ground wire off while I'm thinking about it. There we go. nuts. Now let's turn it over and see if this is actually going to work. I think it will. Oh, look there. <laughs> it's already fell out. Also notice the orientation of the motor, mostly just where the wires come out because you want to get it back in the same way. So there's our squirrel cage fan and it's got another set screw which they give you a hole right there to put your Allen wrench through to get that one loose. And it is usually the same size Allen wrench for both fans. Did I say usually? Not in this case. It's actually smaller. And it could be metric. Every now and then they'll slip a metric in on you. There we go. Usually don't have to loosen that up too much and it should just slip right off her. Boom. Just like that. I'm going to go blow this out with some compressed air. Whenever you blow one of these out with compressed air, 
and that stuff's hitting you in the face that comes out of here, you don't want to know what that stuff is. Trust me. <laughs> you do not want to know what that is. Just go on, move on with your life, and don't worry about it. It'll be okay. We laid this motor right here so we know exactly how this one goes on. So we stick it in there with the flat part because this motor shaft is D-shaped. So we put the D-shape right where our set screw's at. We're just gonna snug this down a little bit. We probably have to make some fine adjustments. I'm gonna put it back just about like it was because that ought to be pretty close. And I'm gonna go ahead and torque this to factory spec. Everybody liked my, oh, what are y'all doing? What are y'all looking at? I'm over here. Well, I've had several comments here in the last couple days about a furnace job and everybody really liked my torque pliers because we're gonna torque this set screw to the factory specs, of course, as we always do. So y'all listen for it. Click, 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 see? Torque pliers. Really ought to get you some of these. Everybody needs torque pliers. All right. So we're gonna orient the motor correctly. We're gonna stick it, stick it back here in its little cubby hole where it likes to live. See if we can get a hold of our wires. No, it's too far back in there. Stick it through here a little bit and then see if we can get a hold of our wires. There they are. Well, sort of. Ta-da, got the wires. We'll go ahead and just stick the motor in there and just uh, do a quick, quick preliminary check. Yep, that uh, squirrel cage fine fan seems like it will be just fine. So I'm gonna reach in here with a nut, get it started. Then we set this up here. Oh, dump the old motor off. No harm, no foul. It was already, it was already bad. Get our other nut started. And of course, we're gonna torque those to factory specs as well. With our quarter inch torque drive handle. I didn't know you had to have so many special tools to work on furnaces, did you? Click, click. Click, click, there we go. Torque the factory spec. Now these fans usually are not very dirty because they're, they're picking up outside air and blowing it through the combustion chamber. So I don't even have to blow that one out with compressed air. Just gotta get the D-shaped side of the shaft in the right place slide that down put that clamp back on snug it up click click awesome all right now we're going to put the combustion fan cover back on like so get all the 300 screws back in that I'm eh, probably exaggerating. I think there's like six. Now, we got everything snugged up, so we're just gonna reach down here and spin that fan, make sure nothing's hitting, sounds good. And we're gonna get this ground wire put on right now. That uh, ground wire, 
for that motor. It plugs in down here in the bottom of the furnace. So I just run it, run that wire down through and plug it in here to this neutral bus bar. All right, now let's turn it back over. We can go ahead and plug our motor into our time delay relay right here. Go ahead and stick our, uh, our board bracket back on. So it ain't flopping around everywhere. It's time to test it. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll try and do, uh, I'll put a little shot of the old motor and the new one lets you tell the difference, lets you see the difference in the sound <laughs> it makes. It's gonna be significant, trust me. All right, so we got the furnace out here on the back of the pickup where my propane tank's at, because I still don't have my van. I'm starting to think I'm never gonna have my van back ever again. Been snug that up and cut the gas on. Look up our jumper wires to a 12 volt battery sitting right here. Yellow is ground, negative. Red is positive. And we just twist our two blue wires together. There are thermostat wires. So there's the sound the new one makes. And here is the old one. That fan is just barely turning for effect. Here's the new one. Here's the old one. That fan is just barely turning. And it lit right up. Did you hear it? Or was I jibber jabbering? You hear it burning? Smells good, looks good, sounds good. Don't we'll call it good. So there you go, and yes, y'all did hear me right. I still don't have my service fan back. ACE in Florida sold me a bad ECM. Put it on there, it ran for three or four days, about 150 miles. And two more electric codes came up on the computer. Different ones from what was before. So took it off, sent it back to Florida. They had it for almost four business days before they figured out, oh, hey, it's bad. And uh, we don't have any more. And our suppliers don't have any more. So we don't really know what we're gonna do, but we're gonna look for one. And you give us, uh, you give us uh, three more business days and call us on Monday and we'll tell you whether we found one or not. Like, <laughs> for real? I don't think I'm ever gonna get my service fan back. So, you know, it is what it is, it's life. Life sometimes doesn't seem fair, but. Um, so that's all we got on this. That was uh, changing a fan motor on your Suburban SF30F, right? Model, furnace. Yeah, I think so. As always, really appreciate you watching my videos. It just means the world to me that, that somebody out there actually watches my videos. And some of you seem like you enjoy them. So two thumbs up to you guys and gals for watching my videos. Uh, I am going to go up the road and fix another one. And uh, y'all have a fantastic day. Testing, testing. Good Lord. Give me a break. Broke me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Give me a break. Give me a break. Breaking me off of that piece Kit Kat bar. Actually, it was last week, but anyhow, you don't know when I'm taping this or taping it. I just showed my age there. There ain't no tape anymore. Everything's digital. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. Um, so, anyhow, we, uh, I gotta quit saying uh, too. 
So we went and... Thank you.